Welcome to another SkyMind screencast. Our screencast consists of me performing, writing some code, and demonstrating some examples uh, with voice. In this case, I'm going to demonstrate using the DataVec toolkit to read some comma-separated data, to select fields from that comma-separated data, and transform that comma-separated data uh, into a numerical format from a string format so that it can be used in a neural net. The data file and the Java code are available at this GitHub repo. Thank you for watching. Enjoy. In this screencast, I'm going to demonstrate using DataVec uh, to parse a comma separated file and extract values for use uh, in deep learning. The file I'm going to be working with, and I'll share this with you if you'd like to work through this example yourself, uh, is reports.csv. And this is just slightly reformatted data from the Storm uh, Prediction Center uh, with the National Weather Service here in the USA. The format is year, month, date, dash, hour, hour, minute, minute. The severity of the report, the location of the report, the county of the report, the state of the report, the latitude and longitude, a comment, and then the type of report, whether it was a tornado, whether it was, if we scroll down, whether it was a wind report, and if we scroll down further, whether it was a hail report. The severity field, the second field, if it was a hail report, would be the size of the hailstone. If it's a wind report, it would be the speed of the wind. If it was a tornado report, it would be the Fujita rating for the report. The data I'd like to extract out of this for deep learning and for this example is I want to extract the latitude and longitude and I also want to extract the type of report, whether it's tornado, wind, or hail. And the tool I'm going to use to do that is DataVec. And I'm going to move to writing some Java, and we'll demonstrate this. So we're going to take the data from that original format to this format using a DataVec transform. Using the instructions that you can find here at the Deep Learning uh, 4J website in the Quick Start Guide, will help you set up an IntelliJ environment that you could follow along and build this example. So what I'm going to do is in the DL4J Spark local examples, I'm going to go ahead and add a new class. So I'm going to add a new Java class and I'm going to call this Storm Reports Record Reader. Let's go ahead and start writing our Storm Reports record reader. I'm going to switch to presentation mode so the code's a little bit easier to read. We'll need our main. The data I showed you in that uh, reports.csv file, it did not have a header. So when I load the data, I'm going to specify the num lines to skip. is zero. And I'll just write that here at the top. The data was comma delimited. The next step is to write some code that specifies where we're going to read our data from and where we're going to write our data to. So this just specifies a baster, and once again, this is the line you're going to have to change if you do this exercise at home. Specify the file name, combine the two to get an input path, and then so we can run it multiple times and not have files collide, I am going to append a timestamp to each of the output directories. So we're going to write to our baster, 
the file called reports processed, and then the timestamp of when this was executed. I've added a comment to the code uh, that shows what the data looks like as a sample record and notes the fields are date, time, severity, location, etc. So I can refer to that as I build the tools to parse it. So in order to parse this data, we start by creating a schema. I'm going to call this input data schema. And I'm going to use schema builder to build it. The first thing we have is a collection of string columns. So I'm going to use this add columns string. Where's that? There it is, right at the top. So we have date time, which we're going to treat as a string, uh, severity, location, county, and state are all string. So we're going to use add column strings to specify that. The next two columns are the columns that we'll actually be extracting, uh, the latitude and longitude, and those can be represented as double. The next column is a string column, so we'll add columns string. And that is that comment field. And then the last column uh, is the type, whether it's a tornado report, a hail report, or a wind report. And that is actually a categorical column. So we want to specify that the field we're going to call type can be one of the following strings. Tor, wind, or hail. And then we can go ahead and build. So that's our input data schema. I've written a comment that defines our next step. We've defined our input schema. Now we need to define a transform process that extracts the latitude and longitude and converts this type to either a 0, 1, or 3. So let's go ahead and write that process. So the tool to do that is we define a new transform process from DataVec. I'm going to call that TP. And we're going to use transform process builder. And we're going to start with input data schema. The first thing I need to do is specify that I want to remove some columns. And the columns that I want to remove would be uh, date time, severity, location, county, state, and comments. So we're going to remove those and let's add comments to that. And then I need to specify uh, what remains. So latitude and longitude are already doubles. Those are fine. We need numeric data for our neural net. I need to specify that I want to convert categorical to integer. And that would be the type field. And that's it. And then build. So that's our transform process. At this point, we've described the input schema the way the data is stored on disk, and then our transform process that removes columns, uh, maintains some columns as they are, and then converts a column to a numeric type. This little snippet of code is going to step through our transform process, however many steps there are, and for each step it's going to show the schema after step.
So it's just going to print the output of our before and after schema. This would be a good time to pause and run the code, make sure that everything up till now is good. And all this is going to do is print our before and after schema. Here we see uh, after step zero, we've gotten rid of all the columns except for latitude, longitude, and type. And then the next step takes that categorical field type and converts it to an integer of either 0, 1, or 2. So our transform process uh, looks good. Once we've written and printed out our transformation steps, it's time to execute them. And the way we do that uh, the current implementation is Spark only, so we'll need to use Spark. Spark's rather straightforward to set up. We're going to be running local Spark, so we don't need to execute it on a cluster. You certainly could, but in this case, uh, we're not. So I need to set up a Spark Conf. Once I've set up a Spark Conf, I need to set the master. So I'm going to call a setter on the master. We need to set the master to local. When a Spark application is running, we can set an application name. So if we were to look at the Spark user interface, uh, we could see that this job was running and see what resources it was using. And we're going to call this the Storm Reports Record Reader Transform. Now that we've set uh, local configuration to execute on a local Spark master, we've given the application a name, we need to uh, create a Spark context. So we create a new context uh, and pass it our configuration. Once we've specified our Spark configuration, then we need to work with Spark by creating these Java RDDs. It's an in-memory representation of our data. So the first one we create is called lines. And it's going to contain string data. And it's going to be generated by reading the text file from our input path. So that reads our data in. Then we need to convert that data to a collection of writable uh, for our record reader to process. So this RDD, storm reports, is going to be generated by running this map function, a string to writables across the data set. So we read in the strings, convert them to writables, and that's at this step. Now that we have them in DataVec writables, we're going to create a new RDD that's going to contain a list of writable. We're going to call that processed. And it's going to be generated by running our transform executor against this last RDD, against storm reports. And we're going to pass that transform executor our transform process that we defined up above right there. So at this point we've converted our data uh, to writables and we could pass them uh, on to a deep learning neural network, build an ND array from them. But in our case we're going to go ahead and just write them back to disk. So I'm going to create a new uh, RDD called to save and we're going to map uh, the writables back to string. So we convert the strings to writables, run our transform across those writables, and then we convert our writables back to string, uh, delineate them uh, with commas. Then all that's left to do is to take our to save, our last uh, RDD, and save that as text file, and then specify 
uh, our output path. All that's left to do is run our code. And when I went to do that, I realized I had a typo here uh, in my path. So I fixed that typo. We'll go ahead and run that code. So it should read our data. Should output our schema. And get a bunch of uh, info log notices from Spark and it looks like it completed. Let's take a look. So when this code executed it created a directory instead of a file. Spark's a distributed framework you can't have multiple workers writing to the same file so they each write their output file into a directory. So when you specify an output path in Spark it's always a directory. We can see that there. And we see a uh, zero length success file and then two part files. So let's go ahead and take a look at uh, one of the part files. And there we see what we had hoped for. We see latitude, longitude, zero for tornadoes. And so we see the first 20 records at our tornadoes. And then we see the beginning of the wind reports, one for wind. And then in the second part file, we'll see the rest of the wind reports and then the hail reports. So congratulations, we've successfully transformed a data set into a format that can be ingested uh, into our neural net. Thank you.